honestly was not expecting to see um, this level of uh, vulnerability of the cathedral. You know, it's such a massive um, structure. You tend to think of it as kind of being immutable. And I think that's what the shock was for uh, much of the world is that, you know, for centuries, it's just been there so solid. And in fact, it was very fragile. So I think once we got inside and we were um, forced to put on um, disposable overalls and hard hats, disposable because of the toxicity. And we were told to launder all our clothes and wash our shoes afterwards. Um, but once you get uh, inside, what's the most remarkable thing is that it is utterly empty and you can hear a pin drop. And it's not the Notre Dame we know as being crowded and full of tourists and, you know, everybody jostling for space and taking pictures. It is utterly vacated. Um, it's like walking into a mausoleum. Um, once you get on top of the roof to the actual site of, um, how the, of where the fire was, and you actually take note of, like, how enormous this damage was. It's a little overwhelming. There's only about 75 people working on Notre Dame at the moment. Most of the cathedral is too fragile for actual people to be manipulating or working. And, and for that reason, they don't have an exact account of what the damage was because they've not been very close up to, the, to most of the surfaces. Um, it will take a few months um, before they've actually stabilized the building enough for them to actually climb all over the building and really take measurements of uh, of how much um, damage was done and on you, April 15th. 